have two sets within a sample space. You have set A and you have set B. Uh, if we want to look at just the intersection of the two sets, so the overlap of set A and set B, I'm talking about this section right here, just where the two sets overlap, we'd represent that section using the notation A and B. This upside down U looking symbol means and, it is the intersection of set A and set B. Let's say we want to look at the union of the two sets, meaning the elements that are anywhere inside of A or B, including the intersection. We'd represent that uh, area using this notation, A union B. This U represents the word or. It means the elements that are in A or B anywhere. So let's apply this to um, doing some questions involving probability of the intersections and unions of different sets. So for example, let's say we have a sample of 100 grade 12 students. Of those 100 grade 12 students, 15 of them are on the basketball team, 20 of them are on the soccer team, and there are three students that are part of the basketball and soccer team. So we could represent this information using a Venn diagram. Uh, within our sample space, we have two sets. We have the set of all the basketball players, we have the set of all the soccer players, and these two sets are within our larger sample space of 100 grade 12 students. So within this sample space needs to be the 100 grade 12 students. Three of them play basketball and soccer. So there are three within the intersection of basketball and soccer. So there are three in the intersection. Basketball, there's 15 basketball players. So within this basketball circle, there needs to be 15. There's already three there. So we'd put the number 12 here to show that there are now 15 in the basketball circle. 20 play soccer, which means 17 are here. And keep in mind, there are 100 grade 12 students. Within these sets, within the union of these sets, there are only 32 people, which means there are 68 grade 12 students that aren't part of the basketball or soccer team. Now, let's look at how we could count the number of elements in the union of the basketball or soccer team using a formula. So <clears throat> we can tell from the diagram, the union of the two sets, like I said, 17 plus three plus 12, there are 32 people that are in the union of the set basketball and soccer. So there are 32 that are on the basketball or soccer team. Let's use a formula to calculate this. So if we wanted to calculate the number of students that are on the basketball or soccer team, number that are on basketball or soccer, remember that U means or, what we could do is we could just add the number of players that are on the basketball team with the number of players that are on the soccer team if we did this, let's look at what happens. Number of players that are on basketball, well, there's 15 that play basketball. With the number of players that play soccer, there are 20. So it looks like there are 35 people that play on either the basketball or soccer team. But we've established if we look up here at the union of the sets, it's only 32. If we add those three numbers, 32. So why do these numbers differ? Well, what happened was when we added the number of people on the basketball team with the number of people on the soccer team, what happened was these three people got counted twice. They were double counted. And that, that's what happens when we um, were calculating the union of two sets. The number of elements that are in the intersection of the two sets, the number of elements that are on the basketball team and the soccer team get double counted. So what we have to do within our formula for the uh, union of two sets is we have to subtract the overlap, subtract the intersection of the two sets subtract those three people that were double counted. So if we add those together, that gets us our answer of 32. So our general formula, number of elements that are in set A or set B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, and then subtract the number of elements that were double counted, the ones that are in the intersection of set A and set B. Now this formula can be applied to probabilities as well. Let's say instead of counting the number of players that are on the basketball or soccer team, let's say, we, let's say we were calculating the probability that a randomly selected grade 12 student played on the basketball or soccer team. So this time, it's now a probability question. So if we want that probability, basketball or soccer, we follow the same rule. We do the probability of soccer plus the probability they play on the, on the basketball team I wrote them in reverse order, but it doesn't really matter. 
and then we subtract the probability that they play on the soccer and basketball team because we would have double counted those people. Probably they play on the soccer team. Well, there's 20 people out of the 100 grade 12 students that play on the soccer team. Basketball, well, 15 of the 100 students play on the basketball team. Remember, for probabilities, you always divide by the total number of elements in the sample space, which is 100. And then we subtract the probability that they played on the soccer and basketball team. There are three people that were double counted, so we subtract the probability of them playing on both, which is 3 out of 100. And if we add this up, we get our answer of 32 out of 100, which reduces to 8 out of 25. Let's look at another problem. Here's this problem. If you draw a card randomly from a deck of 52 cards, what is the probability is a king or a heart? So this time, once again, it is an or question. So we want the probability of drawing a king or a heart. So probability king, I'm going to define that as set A. Heart, I'm going to define that as set B. If we want the probability of A or B, we have to do the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then subtract the overlap, the intersection of the two sets, the probability that A and B both happened. So let's look at both of our subsets, our set of kings, our set of hearts. Kings, I've listed out everything that is in that set. We could have the king of diamonds, king of hearts, king of spades, king of clubs. The number of elements in this set is four. There are four items here, one, two, three, four. Set B, hearts, there are 13 different hearts two through ace of hearts. So the number of elements in set B is 13. Notice, within these sets, there's one card, the king of hearts, that is in both sets. So that card is in both sets. So that is our intersection of the two sets. The number of elements that are in set A and set B, the intersection of the two sets, is one. So if we were to draw our Venn diagram for this, which we wouldn't have to now that you have a formula up here to use to calculate, but if you were to draw your Venn diagram to help you visualize, within our set of 52 cards, some of those cards are kings, some of those cards are hearts, and there is actually one card that is both a king and a heart. Four total kings, 13 total hearts, which means there are 36 of the 52 cards that are neither a king or a heart. <clears throat> so we want our goal here for this question is to calculate the probability of drawing a king or a heart. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula up here, probability of A or B, probably of getting a king or a heart, probability king or heart would be equal to the probability of drawing a king plus the probability of drawing a heart and then you subtract the probability that you've drawn both a king and a heart, that will take care of the double counting that happened. Probably of drawing a king, there's four kings, so you have a four to 52 chance of drawing a king. Probably of drawing a heart, well there's 13 hearts, so you have a 13 out of 52 chance of drawing a heart. Minus, there's one card that is both a king and a heart, so you have a one out of 52 chance that both happened. If we add those up, we get 16 out of 52, and then you can reduce to get 4 to 13. All right, we had to subtract this 1 out of 52 because there is one element, this king of hearts, that got double counted. These events, the fact that this right here are probably a king and a heart, the fact that that is not 0, the fact that this, the number of elements that are in the intersection right here is not 0, makes these events um, not mutually exclusive. Let's look at what happens when we have events that are mutually exclusive, when the number of elements that are in the intersection of the two sets is zero. Like this question, if you draw a random card, what's the probability it is a king or a queen? So once again, we want the union of the two sets. We want the probability of drawing a king or a queen. We want the probability of, we'll call it kings A, queens set B, probably of drawing a king, which I called set A, or B. Let's look at how we can calculate this. So I've listed out both sets, the set of kings, king of diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs, and the set of queens, queen of diamonds, hearts, spades, clubs. Notice there is no card that is in both of these sets. The number of elements in set A is four. 
the number of elements in set B is 4. The number of elements that are in A and B, the number of elements that are shared by the two sets, is 0. So these events are what we call mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive. You can't simultaneously draw a king and a queen. Not possible. The two sets don't share any elements. So as a Venn diagram, our set of 52 cards, within, those, within this sample space of 52 cards, we have a set of kings, we have a set of queens. Notice these two circles are not overlapping because there are no cards that are both a king and a queen. So there is no intersection of the sets. And there are 44 cards that are neither a king or a queen. So I should write 44 within the sample space, but outside of the two sets. So if we want the probability of drawing a king or a queen, we don't have to worry about subtracting the intersection of the two sets, probably of A plus probability of B. We could do minus the probability of A and B, but it's just going to be zero because there are no elements. So if they're mutually exclusive, we can use this version of the formula where we don't have to subtract the intersection of the sets. So probability of drawing a king or a queen, probability of drawing a king or queen, all we have to do is the probability of drawing a king plus the probability of drawing a queen. Because they're mutually exclusive events, we don't have to subtract anything. 4 to 52 plus 4 to 52, 8 out of 52, or if reduced, 2 out of 13.